Bloodborne and Kingdoms of Amalur getting a remaster. Last of Us Part 2 pre-orders outsell the PlayStation hit Spider-Man. EA bend the knee to Steam. Amazon's first foray into gaming is a disaster. Linux from Linus Tech Tips apologizes to Epic CEO Tim Sweeney over PS5, HDD Tech and much more. Hey what is happening guys this is Orca from Orca's Gaming Corner and welcome to the weekly gaming news. Bloodborne one of the biggest PS4 exclusives may be getting a remaster for the upcoming PS5 and PC. Is this a big deal? Of course it is but Bloodborne has been one of the most beloved games created by firm software and fans are eagerly waiting for its PC port for years now. The original game runs on the PS4 at 30fps and 30fps is not the main point here. It is marred with severe frame timing issues while running at 30fps and that has been the sticking point of the game for a very long time. And the boost mode of the PS4 Pro did not mitigate these issues in any meaningful way. There are a lot of tweets and discussions about the remaster being full 4K at 60fps. 4K at 60fps with uniform frame pacing and no starter would be an ideal ask and also it should be on Steam. That is all what gamers ask for. Moving on we have some good news for the PC gaming community as finally EA has bent the knee to Steam and a majority of electronic arts titles are coming to Steam. I remember clearly when EA started their own platform Origin and made all their PC games exclusive to Origin. Clearly that did not pan out well for EA and so they are back on Steam which is good. The number of different platforms we need to open just to play different games is simply ridiculous at this point and publishers like EA getting back on Steam is a big deal. And the best deal is that the subscription Origin Access and Origin Access Premier is also coming to Steam later this year. So basically it sounds like competition for Xbox Game Pass for PC which is good because then we the gamers get even more games for cheap. It seems that there cannot be a games news week without me talking a bit about The Last of Us Part 2. Well according to Jim Ryan, CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, Last of Us Part 2 has outsold the pre-orders of Spider-Man and the game is doing really well in spite of all the leaks and the backlash. The Last of Us Part 2 is also one of the most accessible games in the history of gaming console and the ease of use is fantastic. There are all kinds of visual and audio aids for people to play the game and the use of high contrast filters with en where enemies can be red, friendlies can be blue is one such cool tool that people can use and also stuff like text to speech are a part of the game. For most of us who don't use these controls it may seem that every game does this automatically however that is not the case and when there is so much crunch during any big AAA game development, accessibility is the last thing on developers mind. So for Naughty Dog to go out an extra mile and make sure that there are a plethora of these options out there keeping in mind the different kinds of people who play the game is an amazing feat and kudos to Naughty Dog for that. On other news, Amazon's new free to play baby Crucible seems to have been doing rather poorly after just launching two weeks ago with Metacritic. Critic score just sitting at 54 and users review sitting lower at 4.3 out of 10. I think these huge corporations like Amazon and Google fail to understand that the gaming industry just cannot be enticed by throwing money at a bunch of developers and asking them to make something like Fortnite or Call of Duty. A lot of R&D and market research as well as hiring people with motivation who interact with the community and listen to community feedback are the key points to success. Usually the core gaming audience is pretty hardcore and will not be easily appeased by B grade and C grade games that do very little except make a mockery of these huge corporations. Another game that has not been doing so well is Valorant. Even though it is sitting with a Metacritic score of 83 on the critic side, the actual user score is just 5.7 which seems abysmal and slightly better than Crucible. Valorant is developed by Riot Games, the developer of League of Legends and is supposed to compete with the likes of Valve's CSGO and Blizzard's Overwatch. 
In this case, I am sure they will get the game up to speed and improve it because Riot is very well known in the gaming industry and also have a lot of money to back their developers. As per VG247, Epic Games had to rewrite part of Unreal 5 engine code to keep up with the PS5 SSD. This comes from Nick Pinewood, VP of Engineering at Epic and I quote, The PlayStation 5 provides a huge leap in both computing and graphics performance. But its storage architecture is also truly special. The ability to stream in content at extreme speeds enables developers to create denser and more detailed environments, changing how we think about streaming content. It's so impactful that we've written our core I.O. subsystems for Unreal Engine with the PlayStation 5 in mind. All that seems impressive and I think it's good that one of the consoles is enabling the entire tech industry the opportunity to move forward with blazing fast SSD speeds. And in other stories related to the PS5 SSD, Linus Sebastian from Linus Tech Tips goes ahead and apologizes for his comments about the PS5 SSD to Tim Sweeney. I'll have a link to the video below in the description. You can go yourselves and watch it. Lastly, we have yet another remake or remaster, whatever you may call it. Kingdoms of Amalur is getting a remaster from Nordic Games and hope the project turns out good. The game itself is good and the combat is really fun and hoping that all goes well for THQ Nordic in this new project. We have also reached the end of our this week's news video. If you like what I do and do want to support my channel, share and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next week with a whole bunch of new gaming news. Ciao.